In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Airtable to better manage your AI prompts within your automations. The main mistake that people make is they embed their prompts directly into their automations like this, which means anytime you want to change a prompt, you have to open your automations, you have to test it, and you risk breaking all of your other automations. Instead, we manage all of those prompts in Airtable, including your system, your user, and your assistant prompts. And we use clever automations so that we can import those prompts as variables. Here we can map in those prompts for system, and you can see we have those same variables variables here, nicely broken apart like this with access to our system, user, and assistant prompts directly. And so we can simply come in here and select the system prompt. Then we can do the same for our user prompt, just like that. And then we can add in our assistant prompt as well. Then we can save that automation. And then if I were to come in and modify the prompt, and then the next time this automation runs, it's going to import that prompt into the automation automatically without having to come back into the automation to change it. In this video, I'll show you how to build the Airtable database, the entire automation and this mechanism to import the prompts as variables for ChatGPT step-by-step from scratch. Now, if you want access to these make.com blueprints so you can simply import the automations that we build today and have them available just like this, including access to the Airtable database. Make sure to jump into my new community, the No Code Architects. There's a Make Workshop and a bunch of other templates you can get access to like you see on the video today. It's a growing community and you can get tech support to all your questions. And there's calls almost every single day where you can talk to me personally. To get started, I'm gonna go ahead and create an Airtable base from scratch. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. I'm gonna rename our base to AI Prompt Database. I'm going to rename this table here to prompts. Now we're going to create a few different columns here. This first one is going to be the name of our prompt. This is the name of the prompt that we'll reference in our automation. Go ahead and save. Then I'm going to convert these other columns into our system prompt. This should be a long text. Go ahead and save. Then I'm going to convert this to our user prompt. User, convert this to a long text as well. Go ahead and click save. Then let's convert this one here to assistant. And again, we'll convert this to a long text and save it. Now I'm just gonna jump into my existing base and copy over some sample prompts. In our automation, we have something to work with. Gonna paste that, I'll click continue. Then I'm gonna just adjust the row height a little bit here so we can better see it. So now what you can see here is that we've grouped these different prompts with their associated system, user, and assistant prompt so that in our automation, we can reference the capital prompt and its associated system, user, and assistant prompt. So I just opened up a brand new automation. I'm gonna start with an Airtable module and we are going to search for records. Now I have to add a new connection to our new base. So I'm gonna go to add connection type OAuth. I'll go ahead and rename this to AI prompt database. I'll click save. It's going to open up this window to connect the new base. I'll add that base AI prompt database. I'll make sure to use the one that I'm building from scratch grant access. I'll go ahead and pick the base AI prompt database table prompts, and then I'll go ahead and select all, which is going to bring in all of the different columns from the Airtable base. And I can leave the limit here at 10, but if you had more prompts, then you'd want to expand that. I'll just move it to 100, click OK. That means our make automation could bring in 100 rows from our prompt database. Now keep in mind, your automation is probably going to trigger from a different module other than this. So you might actually be triggering from something like a webhook, in which case after it triggers, then it would search your Airtable database to bring in the prompts for the rest of the automation. But in this example, I'm just going to use the Airtable search as as the trigger to demonstrate the functionality. So now if I run this module once, it should bring in all of our prompts. And so you can see here, we have all of our prompts. We have the main name, and then we have the system user assistant and a bunch of other fields that we don't really need. So we have all the data that we need, but I wanna bring it into this format here, just like this, that allows us to see it in a very organized and nice manner. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to use the text aggregator module that's in your tools. And we're gonna scroll down and go to the text text aggregator. And for the source module, you're going to want to use the Airtable search. And what this module is going to let us do is it's going to go into all of this data and it's going to refactor it so that we can build out this JSON structure that we see here. Now, before I start building out the text here, I'm going to go ahead and show advanced settings and I'm going to go to the row separator and I'm going to move that to other, and then I'm going to put a comma, and then I'm going to go ahead and start to build this out. So you don't have to understand everything that I'm doing here. I'm essentially building out a 
JSON object. So I'm going to start with a quote and I'm going to use a built-in make function called upper, which is going to convert our variable here to uppercase if it is not already. And then I'm also going to use the replace function on the prompt from Airtable. And in order to access these functions, you just need to type it just like I did and it will turn into these built-in functions. And here I'm going to replace any spaces in the prompt with an underscore. And I do that just for formatting reasons and to keep things consistent. Now I'm gonna add a colon. I'm gonna jump over here to these other tools here. I'm gonna go to this space. I'm gonna add another colon and simply turn that into an underscore. So what that's going to do is if I ever have a space in one of my prompts like this with another word, it's going to replace this space with an underscore. And now from here, I'm gonna close the parentheses for this replace and then a second close parentheses for this upper here. And now I just need to close that original quote. And now here I'm going to add a colon and a curly brace. And now I'm gonna add in our system prompt. I'm gonna go open quote, system, close quote with a colon. Then I'm gonna add an additional quote and I'm gonna map in the system prompt from Airtable. Here we have our system prompt. Then I'm going to close the quote. Now I'm going to add a comma and add in our user prompt. Again, add a quote, user, close quote, colon, and now we'll add in the user. I forgot to add the quotes around the user, so I'm gonna add those as well. Then I'm going to add another comma. Now we're gonna add in the assistant prompt, close quote, colon, open quote. Now let's map in the assistant, close quote, now we're done and we can just add the closing curly brace. Now again, this might look a little bit confusing, but again, we're just writing code that is gonna help us format these prompts into a nice experience when we're building our automations. I'll go ahead and click OK. As always, I'm gonna come down here and click Save. It'll give you a warning because it doesn't like this to be the final module in your automation. I'll save anyway. Then we're gonna add an additional module here. This time we're gonna type JSON. We're going to parse the JSON. And in the JSON string here, we're going to simply put a curly brace and we're gonna map in the text from the previous module. And then we're gonna close that curly brace and click OK. We'll go ahead and click Save. Again, it's gonna warn us it doesn't like the JSON to be the final module, but go ahead and save anyway. And then let's go ahead and give this a test run and see what we get. Again, remember, you will need to add in some of your own prompts over here and include a system user and assistant prompt for each prompt that you add. Let's run this once. Let's see if we get any errors, run anyway. So it looks like everything came through. If we look here, we're gonna see all of the rows coming from Airtable. And now if we look at this module here, we're gonna see the input is all of the bundles coming from Airtable, consolidates all of that into one final output string that looks like this. And then we map that into our JSON. So if we open this up and you see here, we have our output, we have all of our main prompts. And then if we open this up, for each prompt, we have our system, user, and assistant prompts. So now we can simply come into our automation and we can go to chat GPT. We'll go ahead and show more. I'll create a completion. If you don't already have a connection, you don't need to add one. And then we'll go ahead and select a model, chat GPT system 4.0. And then we can go ahead and start adding our messages. We'll go ahead and add our system role. And then we can map in for any one of our prompts. You see, we have that nicely formatted prompt now with the system user and assistant prompts for each of our main prompts. So let's go ahead and map something in. We can map in the system prompt here. Then we'll go ahead and add in the user prompt right here. Just select that. Go ahead and put in the assistant prompt just like that and map that in from our JSON object. And here are max tokens. I'll go ahead and just put zero and we'll go ahead and click OK. I'll go ahead and click save. We won't get that warning anymore because we're no longer using one of these modules as the last module. And now we should be able to just run this. I'm gonna format all of our prompts and then map those into ChatGPT. If I open this up, we can see the messages that we sent. Open this up so we can see that our prompt from Airtable is getting mapped in just like that. And the same with our user and our assistant prompts. And so again, if we wanted to adjust any of these prompts, instead of having to open up the automation, come in here and adjust it here. And so now I can just save this automation. And the next time I want to update a prompt, instead of having to come into the automation, I can simply go into my Airtable database. I'll go to the prompt, make an update. And then I can just jump into the automation. I can go ahead and run it again. Now we can see if we come into our automation, this execution, and we open up our system prompt, we can see that the prompt changed automatically without having to actually update the ChatGPT module. You are a culinary expert that has won many awards. I meant to say one. But now you can see the power of storing all of your prompts 
in an organized fashion here. You can store every single prompt that you use in your automations, the system, the user, and the assistant, organize them nicely here, and just map them directly into your automations, just like we did in this video. So if you like this video, make sure to jump into the no-code architects where you can get access to a bunch more content, including a bunch of templates like you saw today. I'd love to see you there, but either way, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.